Sí, sí, sí. sí, sí, sí. Ah, ah, allá, allá. Sí, sí, sí. 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 Sí, sí, I, uh, I began uh, work in stop motion as a, as a teenager in 1972. Around 1968, um, I saw a film uh, called Chasing in the Argonauts by Ray Harryhausen. Uh, I was 12 years old at the time. And uh, a year before that, I had been really interested in the Greek mythologies. And then I saw that film and I saw a way to make them come to life, like all the stories. And I fell in love with his work, you know, and later on as I got older, I discovered the works of, of other animators, George Powell, Ladislav Sterovich, and others. You know, so that got me interested. Uh, I started actually machining armatures about 19 years ago. I do have a website. Um, with my work in armature machining, and uh, I have sold a few there. Just recently, though, uh, for various reasons, among them, uh, I'm working on a feature film in stop motion. I decided that to retire from armature machining uh, commercially and concentrate on the film. So if you're going to build a human, uh, well, certainly anatomy. That's probably the most important thing. Uh, uh, what kind of human? You know, like a tall, a short, an old person, you know, a young person. Uh, a lot of times, well, for example, in the case of Mr. Harryhausen, since armatures were so expensive, oftentimes he would have cannibalize or use over the armatures from his, his previous movies. Uh, for example, the armature for the Emer in 20 Million Miles to Earth, which he refurbished for the Cyclops. Um, most Armature machinists, if they can, you know, if the production can afford it, prefer to custom make the armature specifically for that production. For my personal work, I try to use aluminum as often as I can. Now, there's other things that you can do with aluminum to make it stronger. You can you can use a process that's called called uh, the anodizing. There was a, a book with a series of, of how-to drawings, mechanical sketches, and such that was written by uh, an armature machinist and animator. Jeff Taylor. There was a lot of really good information in the book. And then I thought, well, I had been machining armatures for so long that I thought, well, maybe the, the stop motion community could use another book. If I could find a publisher, maybe the, the price could come down a little bit so that more people could afford it, you know. The Labyrinth, it was actually an idea that uh, was conceived by my late wife about 10 years ago or 11 years ago. Uh, she suggested, well, how about the legend of the Minotaur. With the exception of an Italian film called The Minotaur, um, I don't know of any other films about the labyrinth or the Minotaur or Theseus. I really don't think a short film will do the story any kind of justice. So I expanded it to a screenplay, uh, to a feature film, which came in about 89 pages, like an hour and a half. Originally, when I was writing the story, I thought, well, it might be kind of nice to do a standard here's the hero and he comes in and he kills the creature. And then as I began to research the myth, I discovered the Minotaur is really the son, the, the, the bastard son of the queen. And so, gosh, wouldn't it be great to do a, a take on his perspective of the story? And he's just a child uh, who uh, is deformed, but he's loved by his mother. And so she makes every effort she can to try to rescue him from the labyrinth, but in the end, she, she can't. This armature right here, as you see, is um, obviously the Minotaur, <laughs> uh, without the horns, of course. Uh, this particular armature, there's a scene at the end when Theseus stabs him with a spear, and his mother is there, you know, and he falls into her, 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 uh, into her arms. I wanted to be able to get him to go, as he's breathing, because that's a very emotional part of the story, of that scene, you know, that of putting plates uh, to represent the chest. And then as you turn the screw, you can animate the chest pieces going forward like this. In the final analysis, the most important thing is whether or not the audience is being entertained. 
they're being entertained, they're really not going to care how you did it. If they aren't being entertained and they start to look around and like look at their watch, you're in trouble, you know. So, but, so you try to come up with a story that, that you know, is entertaining. That's the most important thing.